All right, guys and gals, what I've got here for you today is um, a little uh, video that uh, I hope you will find uh, thought-provoking and maybe uh, help uh, help some folks think outside the box a little bit um, when it comes uh, toward prepping. Okay. Now the whole concept uh, here is um, how do you prep without money? Okay. Now um, you know unless you're entirely completely self-sufficient. Um, you know, making your own jars and making your own pots and pans and, and all of those kinds of things. You're never going to be able to prep 100% for uh, free. But I'm going to show you the uh, cheapest ways to do it. Parts of it are to grow a garden. Very, very little money in this. All of this came from the garden. And um, it's not expensive to put it back either. Um, so I wanted to talk to, like this video is, is not just for uh, beginning preppers, but for uh, preppers of all levels, okay? And, you know, maybe it'll make you think of something you hadn't thought of uh, previously. Because uh, the, the entire goal here is to help people. So if, uh, if we can help one person, then that's a win. Um, but I wanted to talk to the, uh, you know, you folks that are newer to prepping uh, first, okay? Now, um... Hopefully you're to a point where you've already gone out and maybe gotten uh, some bags of beans or uh, of beans or, or rice or, or bags of pasta, whichever the case may be. Again, don't buy what you, what you don't like or uh, what you don't use, okay? So you've gone out and you've bought something and you want to bring it home. How do you store it, okay? Well, with the beans... It's, it can be very, very simple. It can be as simple as uh, reclaiming a, uh, a used uh, glass jar. This is a, a pickle jar. Reclaiming that from the recycle, giving it a good wash, sterilizing it, and um, you know you want to make sure it's dry, dry, dry before you put it in here. You know, dry storage and moisture don't mix at all, so you want to make sure everything is dry. Now. Again, for those who are new to prepping, first things we talk about are food and water, right? Okay, so this is part of our food with the beans and the rice and the, and the pasta. And, uh, and then we talk about water, okay? Um, you can go out and you can get uh, cases of water or jugs of water or whichever, but you don't have to. There's a, a less expensive way to do it if you don't have any money to do it. Again, you can use recycled juice containers from the recycle give them a very very good wash and you can simply put tap water in that just have a little extra water around um, in case of a bad situation in case uh, you know the water is shut off for some reason it's better at that point to have some tap water around than to have no water at all so um, you know very very inexpensive right down to free okay now um, these things from the garden here very inexpensive to put back like this Swiss chard I'm gonna actually be using this tonight um, in my dinner I'm going to have a, a garden vegetable um, omelet and I'm gonna chop up that Swiss chard and use it but you can dehydrate that um, or uh, yeah, you can dehydrate it and crush it into a jar and just keep it like that. And the same with these, uh, the stems on the chart. You chop those up and you just put that uh, into a, a jar with a sealing lid on it. And uh, you, you cook these like celery. You just want to rehydrate them. And you can put them into a pasta, a soup, a stew, uh, stew, whichever. And the green pepper. I mean, the green pepper and the zucchini, you can go ahead and ferment that. You can dehydrate either one. Just throw it into a jar, like a recovered jar or a proper mason jar, whichever you like. And uh, your storage uh, becomes very, very uh, cost effective. Now, another thing that you can do, especially with a zucchini, is you can just take a box grater. You can grate it up and you can put it into some Ziploc baggies and put it straight into your uh, freezer for use in soups, stews, omelets, um, or whichever you like uh, you know uh, very very inexpensive now any of this uh, stuff that you see here 
um, I didn't have to go anywhere for or, or spend any money. You know, this is stuff, um, you know, for you other preppers who maybe been at it a while, you'll know you've got stuff around that you can do things with, right? So when we've reached the end of our prepping budget, or maybe there was a, uh, uh, a stoppage in your pay due to a layoff because of uh, the global situation, whatever the case might be, um, you know, you've got no money, but you still want to prep. Okay, again, none of this I had to go out for. I had it all in my pantry or in storage already. So I'm just going to take you through uh, what I've done. But before I do that, I want to share with uh, the, the new preppers. Um, are there better ways to store things than this? Yes, there are. But I'll tell you something. Um, in the past, I have had uh, split yellow peas stored simply in a plastic peanut butter jar for 15 years or, or uh, maybe it was longer than that, maybe it was 17 years, and they were just fine. They made a nice fine pot of soup, okay? Um, but I wanna walk you guys and gals through what I've been doing to prepare without money, okay? Now back here, you guys and gals, if you uh, know anything about me, you know I uh, enjoy uh, dry canning and oven canning. That's, this is how I keep, uh, how I store my uh, rice for much, much longer term. I oven can it into these half gallon jars. And I uh, had all the stuff around. Um, I was able to can up seven more half gallon jars of these. Now back here, oven canning again. Um, now this is crackers. These are just uh, plain soda crackers. You know, you would use in your soup. Um, and there's another kind of cracker here. Uh, these are just flip sides. Um, and these are just some dry, uh, dry snacks. These are, uh, well, they're goldfish. I, I enjoy goldfish for a snack. So, um, I've canned up a bunch of those and I was able to get, uh, with what I had, uh, with what I had around, let me see, three, six, nine, 14. I was able to get 14 jars of this, uh, these dry canned crackers, uh, which should stay good for four to five years. Um, as long as the seal is not compromised. Uh, seven half gallons of uh, rice. Uh, what have I got here? Uh, Ten uh, pints of kidney beans uh, that I had dry and I canned those. So those are ready for midterm storage and ready, ready for use. You can just open that and eat that. I have uh, eight jars of um, black beans here that I've done as well. What I've got here, this is um, breakfast sausage that I've pressure canned, okay? Now, um, I talked to you guys and gals about uh, grating this a zucchini to put it into Ziploc baggies to put into the freezer, okay? All right, well, I had a number of packs of breakfast sausage in the freezer, and I wanted to make some room in the freezer, um, you know, to store some grated zucchini uh, over the winter. So I went ahead and I canned up, um, I got nine cans of pressure canned sausage. Um, that, you can, that's an open and eat thing, too. You can heat it up. And it's much better heated up, but um, those are all just fine to uh, open and eat. Of course, the rice you want to cook or the beans you want to cook as well. And what do I have here? I have five jugs of uh, uh, wine, uh, homemade wine at, well, I'll say $15 a jug here in our prices. You're looking at about $70 worth of wine there, all made from things that I just had around the house. Okay, so... Um, just a little bit something different I wanted to bring to you guys and gals uh, to hopefully uh, stimulate some thought process and maybe make you think outside the box a little bit when it comes to, uh, to storage and, and, um, and prepping and things you can do to prep that don't, uh, don't necessarily cost money. Like um, there's all kinds of things you can do to prep that cost no money at all. You could inventory your preps. You could organize your preps. If you've got a uh, go bag that you're building or working on, and you have items in there that um, are still in a package, take them out and learn how to use them. That costs nothing. You've already spent the money on the item. Learn how to use it. Like, uh, here's something I keep on, on my keychain. That's a ferrocium rod. Ferrocium, ferrocium, however you like to call it. And uh, I keep that on my keychain uh, so that I always have a way to make fire. Um, so you can take stuff out, learn how to use it. Um, things like that. You can do an inventory of your system, reorganize uh, your, your medical kits, 
heck, you can stop by the side of the road where somebody's uh, remodeling their porch and ask them if you can pick up the end pieces. And there's always a little uh, project you can do with um, upcycled uh, uh, and salvaged materials, right? Absolutely free to do so. Um, again, I thought I uh, hope this uh, video would stimulate a little bit of thought in you guys and gals and, and maybe uh, get you to have a look at things in a different way to maybe save you some money and um, just keep on prepping when you don't have any, okay? So I hope uh, everyone uh, is well and safe, finds this useful, and uh, we will talk to you all later. This is going to be North, out for now.